everyone. <clears throat> Some young Christians were attending an international summer camp. Now, one of the projects set before them was to discuss and explore ideas for spreading the gospel in the world. The discussion was wide and varied. It included the use of television and radio programmes, newspaper articles, notices in magazines and so on. Finally, when they were out of ideas, an African girl stood up and gave her opinion. In my country, when we think that a pagan village is ready for Christianity, we don't send books and missionaries. We send them a good Christian family. The family's example is a more powerful proclamation of the gospel on all the books in the world. Soon after celebrating the birth of Jesus, I think it's only fitting that we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family. Jesus, like all mortals, needed the warmth, security and closeness of a family unit to grow and develop as a person. From today's reading, Mary and Joseph had pressures imposed on them from the outset. For a start, they seemed to be constantly on the move. I was reading recently that it's 93 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Now, for a woman with child, that journey would have been very hazardous. And then, of course, the long trek to Egypt with a baby would have been very daunting. Because of their experience, the Holy Family can identify with all those migrant families today who are on the move as a result of war, famine or sheer economic necessity. Today's reading says that Mary, Joseph and Jesus settled down in a town called Nazareth. Families, and especially children, need a settled environment in order to grow and develop as persons. Instability in family life, which often leads to its breakup, is harmful to children in the long run. It fuels childhood worries. Now, in today's nuclear family, the traditional ties between the immediate and extended family have become rather tenuous. This is a fact of modern living, but it's not making family life any easier. Herod was hell-bent on decimating the Holy Family. Now, he symbolises all those dark forces at work in our society which militate against family solidarity. Recently, the Holy Father said, Those who undermine the fundamental role of the family cause a deep wound to society, which is often impossible to repair. Referring to lifestyles which undercut marriage and the family, the Pope goes on, the Church opposes legislation that permits same-sex, so-called marriage, or gives legal status to cohabiting couples. End of quote. Also, proponents of the gender theory do family life no favours when they peddle the false notion that male and female roles are interchangeable at will and not grounded in the God-given attributes specific to the male and female genders. And again he says, the family based on marriage between a man and woman is a natural and irreplaceable institution and is fundamental towards the common good of every society. The term dysfunctional family is often used rather glibly. It seems to refer to them and not to us. To a certain extent, there is dysfunctional elements in every family. Families with faith, however, will be able to weather any storm when things get difficult. They will rely on the grace of God given through the sacrament of marriage. Thank you all very, very much for listening. God bless you all. Oh, oh.